Imagine, your players find themselves in a room with four doors. Now the door on the far left is where the epic boss fight is. That's what you have in your notes. But they pick the door on the far right? Now you're probably thinking to yourself, the door, the door on the on far, the far right. right, I don't I even know what's behind, behind that door. I have, I have nothing, nothing written, written there. there. So you actually respond with, that door's locked. Actually, you try all the other doors, they're locked too, but the one on the far left has a busted lock. Does that sound familiar? Because my friend, that is a very basic example of railroading. In this video, we're gonna go over a few tips on how to avoid railroading in your games. I'm Peter, and this is D&D with me. Hello all and welcome to D&D with me. I'm Peter. I've been a DM for about four years now and it's something that's become quite an obsession. <sighs> so what is railroading? Railroading is taking reasonable options out of the player's hands and forcing them down one path. It's kind of like being on a ride at Disney World. You're strapped in, you're seeing the scenery, but you can't go out and touch it and change anything because last time that happened you got kicked out by the park security. Honestly, I was guilty of railroading in my first session. I wrote down so much that I wanted the players to hit, I would actually force them down a little mini path, even though they didn't know because it was their first time playing. And now that I've had more sessions, I've learned how to avoid railroading. And let's go over a few tips right now. Tip number one, avoid over planning. You're not writing a book. You're not an author. And if you are, thank you, congratulations. I don't read that much, but I'm sure you're doing great. But if you want your players to follow your story to the T, they might as well be reading it and not playing it. D&D is about collaborative storytelling, and the moment you take that agency away from a player, that fun's gone for them. Like I said previously, I was guilty of railroading. Even though I didn't know it or not, I would set high DCs on things that I didn't want to happen, or the big bad guy ended up escaping when a perfectly good, reasonable vine whip happened. I'm sorry, by the way, if you're watching. Later on, I found out that collaborative storytelling is honestly the best way to experience D&D, even for new players. I actually love when my players come up with something that is completely and totally off my plan. Point number two, be flexible. Let the players pick the path. Just because you need them to go to a specific spot or speak to a specific person doesn't mean it always has to be in the same spot. For instance, if the players need to speak to the blacksmith because he's got a secret hammer that he can make to bring down the thunders. Why did I just do that? And they go to the tavern instead? Well, guess what? That dwarf blacksmith is now having a good old drink at the bar. And eventually, they might even talk to him. I find making quick jot notes are the best way to play and prepare for a session. That way, if something goes off the rails, it usually does, you can quickly adapt and change the plan. Tip number three, avoid saying no with some precautions. If a player has a perfectly good and reasonable action, why are you gonna say no? Obviously, you have the murder hobos out there that are going to end up wanting to kill everyone in the village. And I mean, in some some roles, that is a reasonable response. But obviously, this is where we rein in the players. If the players can explain what they want to do clearly, and it still gets you closer to that goal that you needed them to hit for the next point in the story, guess what? It's going to happen. It sounds like a great idea. You want to bring player agency into your games. It's honestly the best part of playing D&D with people. Tip number four, drop hints. Like Hansel and Gretel, I don't even remember that fairy tale. Never mind, we're not doing that one. Hansel and Gretel did breadcrumbs. That's all I remember. When I find that my players are getting a little bit off the beaten path with the story, I introduce a kick in the door mechanic. Now, if some of you DMs might know this, but a kick in the door mechanic, if those who don't know, is literally a kick in the door mechanic. They're sitting in the tavern and they're just in their drinks, playing cards, gambling, throwing knives at the, the waiters. And then all of a sudden, bandits break in through the door. They attack them. An assassin drops from the rafters, obviously not at the same time, but 
But when they kill that assassin or they stop those thieves or they kidnap one of those thieves, they're going to find out that that thief or that assassin was sent forth from the big bad that brings them back on the story or some other part of the story that you need them to go. You can also drop hints by having people, you know, hear rumors in town about something going on in the well or someone poisoned the water hole. As I said, I like to introduce these when the story seems to be stagnating, and I like to try and introduce it organically. Don't try and shove it down their throats. If there's a chance where you can introduce a kick in the door mechanic organically, it makes the game seem so much more interesting. For instance, when my players were playing in, I think their second or third session, they happened upon a settlement which was under attack from a zombie force. Now the players didn't know how to get in the door or really even go any further. So I rolled a D8 and every number on that D8 was assigned to a player in the party. Yes, I was playing with eight people. It was insane. And um, one of the zombies bit the person. So that was a kick in the door mechanic because they had to figure out where the zombies were coming from. They ended up opening up the zombies. Well, they're dead now. As I said, though, kick in the door mechanics really know how to kickstart. Oh, that was so terrible. They know how to kickstart the story. Tip number five. Railroading does not mean having a plan. I know this kind of contradicts the first few points that I have here, but when you're running a multi-session campaign, as I'm sure most of you are, you're going to have an idea of where your story is going to go. You have to have points that you know that the players need to hit. That might change along the way with player agency and player storylines progressing. But incorporating the previous tips of being flexible, not over planning, and dropping hints allow to move that plan along organically and without the players knowing, aka organically. Why can't I speak? Well, Dungeoneers, that's what you guys are called now. If you have any examples of railroading in your game or how to avoid railroading in your games, put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share it. Follow me on Instagram at dndwme because dnd with me was taken. Whoever you are, I will find you and I will destroy Anyways, that's me. I'm Peter. Thanks for watching the video. Take it easy.